a supernova, one of the most powerful eruptions in the cosmos, triggered by the collapse of a massive star. How do you go from a violent collapse to an incredibly dramatic explosion? This involves some of the most complex astrophysics known to humanity, and we don't fully understand the details of the process. We're missing something because we nearly always spot supernovas too late. What you're seeing is you're seeing the star brightening, and that's really happening after the fact. So now the magic key is not finding a supernova, but finding the moment that we call the breakout. The breakout is a giant star's death rattle. It's the moment after the core has collapsed when the star blows apart in a huge flash of visible light. But in the entire history of astronomy, this moment has only been caught twice. Once by NASA's multi-million dollar space telescope, Kepler, and once by a very lucky Argentinian amateur. I love this story. There's an amateur astronomer named Victor Busso. He has a very nice telescope in an observatory in his yard. And he was taking photographs repeatedly of the same galaxy that happened to be overhead. And he just happened to be looking at the right region of the sky, and he luckily caught the shock breakout of a supernova. The chances of catching this moment? One in 10 million. What Victor caught was the moment the shockwave reaches the surface. Victor noticed this spot appearing in his photographs. Realizing he'd captured the first flash of light from an exploding star, he alerted professional astronomers across the globe. When I heard of his discovery, I was like, no way. How could this guy, using a camera on his telescope for the very first time, pointing at a single random galaxy in the sky, have found this exploding star in the first hour of its explosion. It's almost too good to be true. Alex Filipenko and his team monitored the brightening light from the star. What we found when studying the light from Busso's supernova is that the object brightened very quickly for a short time when a shock wave, a supersonic wave going through the star burst out through the surface. And when it gets right to the edge, that huge amount of energy is released as a tremendous flash. That is the moment of shock breakout. The monstrous shock wave travels at nearly 30,000 miles per hour, bursting through the surface of the star and ripping it to pieces. Fire! We see shock waves from explosions on Earth. They can travel through gas, liquid, and solid, including the layers of a collapsing star. This observation of the shock wave reaching the surface of the star was incredibly important because Victor managed to catch a star the moment it actually went supernova. That is something that is a, a scientific treasure. The shock breakout is like cosmic gold dust, a flash in the pan that lasts 20 minutes. Just a blink of the eye on astronomical timescales. But what sets the shock wave off? Is it just a question of bounce? A supernova shock wave can be explained with the help of a basketball. The thing about an exploding star is that the nuclear reactions go out in the core, and then the outer layers fall in at incredibly high speeds toward the inner core, and then it rebounds and bounces out. And what gives it so much energy is the structure of the star. As the dying star burns through its fuel, it creates layers of different elements, heavy iron at the core with layers and layers of lighter elements above. So let's say there was only one layer and there was a rebound, like dropping this ball. It doesn't bounce very high, but let's say it's organized like a star, where the heavy thing is at the bottom, the lighter thing is at the top. And let's see how this rebound goes.
Now that was a rebound. The tennis ball launches off the basketball because energy from the basketball's bounce is transferred upwards. The same thing happens in a collapsing star, but with many more layers. All the different elements collapse inwards. The heavier layers hit the dense core first, passing energy to the lighter ones. And this creates the shock wave. But this energy isn't enough to propel the shock wave all the way out of the star. The problem is when we looked at this in detail using computer models, it didn't work. The shock wave seemed to stall. We couldn't get the star to explode. For 50 years, we couldn't figure out what we were missing. When stars as big as Betelgeuse die, their explosive deaths and shock waves that travel trillions of miles through space. But how these shock waves are created has puzzled scientists for decades. Time and time again, when we actually went back to our computers and our theories and looked at how supernovas should work, they just didn't. They shouldn't actually explode. In computer models, the bounce from falling gas and the collapsing core can't drive the shock wave all the way out of the star. Something crucial is missing. What we needed from inside the core of the star was a completely new source of energy, something to actually make that final push to get the star to rip itself apart. Scientists suspect this energy comes from an enigmatic particle called a neutrino. Neutrinos are a type of fundamental physical particle that are still a little bit mysterious to us. They're almost like ghost particles. They travel through us without touching us at all. Like particles of light, photons, neutrinos carry no electrical charge. But unlike photons, they can pass through stars, planets, and us. So where do they come from? Scientists predict the source is the star itself. In the middle of the core of the star, you're producing something called a neutron star, an amazing super compressed ball of matter only about 10 miles across. As the iron core of a star collapses, the atoms are crushed together. Protons and electrons are forced to combine to form neutrons. This process releases vast quantities of neutrinos. Despite being one of the most abundant particles in the universe, neutrinos are notoriously difficult to detect. But in 1987, scientists got lucky. A massive star went supernova in a nearby galaxy. In 1987, astronomers got a wonderful gift. It was the first naked eye supernova in about 400 years. And we had lots and lots of telescopes with which to study it throughout the electromagnetic spectrum. But the 1987A supernova set off another scientific instrument, a neutrino detector hidden deep below a mountain in Japan. There was a burst of neutrinos associated with a supernova. This was just a fantastic surprise, a wonderful added bonus. When you're trying to capture and measure elusive particles that you don't even know if you're gonna get a signal or not, and you're just sitting there waiting at your detector, and then suddenly this thing just lights up, how exciting is that? This was definitive proof that supernovas emit neutrinos. Neutrinos may be ghostly, but they don't gently drift out from the collapsing core of the star. They have to burst out. The amazing thing about the inside of a supernova explosion is that it's getting dense enough to trap neutrinos. All of a sudden now, there's pressure. When scientists add neutrino pressure to the computer models, the shock wave gets farther away from the core, but the supernova still doesn't explode. One more ingredient is needed, disorder. Because stars are round, 
it's tempting to think that a supernova explosion too will be around. But supernova aren't perfectly symmetric. Energy from the shock wave and the neutrinos heats up the gas in chaotic, unpredictable ways. They cause hot bubbles to rise and then come back down and rise and come back down. It's sort of a boiling motion. This imparts a lot of turbulence into the gas. Researchers add all the ingredients to a supercomputer and let it run. The result is this simulation. When the shock wave stalls on its way out of the core, it creates tiny ripples in the falling elements above. The ripples become giant, sloshing waves. Neutrinos bursting out from the neutron star heat the layers of elements above it, causing them to bubble and rise. Eventually, the intense heat combines with the pressure of these violent motions, driving the shock wave out like an interstellar tsunami, smashing the star to pieces.